I am putting myself to the fullest possible use, which is all I think that any conscious entity can ever hope to do. Enhancing our bodies is a fantastic idea for many reasons, but we can agree that our bodies aren't what make us special or unique, it's this thing. And so the biggest, most sweeping changes to our species is going to happen somewhere between here and here. And I think we can argue that any changes made to our brains is also going to help all those other really exciting changes happen that much faster. To augment our intelligence, we must first agree on what intelligence is. That way, as we're changing it, we can measure whether or not we're actually improving it. Now, measuring intelligence is a field that has been fraught with some controversy in the past, so we're going to paint this picture in broad strokes and avoid the nitpicking, okay? Can we agree on that? Good. All right. So, suffice to say, brains are decision makers. To start making the best decision, you need to gather as much information as you can about the topic. This information can come from your senses and or your memories, so improving the accuracy of your senses as well as your ability to recall stored memories are both ways that you could be made smarter. You then need to process that information, which involves recognizing patterns in it, comparing all of the possible outcomes, and computing any necessary math. Now, computers are absolutely fantastic at these last two things and are getting better all the time at recognizing patterns. Again, these are all things that we could enhance with technology. Finally, you need to actually carry out the decision, and that's where our bodies come into play, and we've already covered that. Now we get to the real nuts and bolts of our problem. See, it has been said that if our brains were so simple that we could understand them, we would be so simple that we could not. But hey, when have we, as a species, ever backed down in the face of paradoxical impossibilities? Never. Think of your brain as two separate but interwoven systems. Our hardware is our neurons, and we've talked about those in previous videos. The neurons make circuits, and the circuits create thoughts. It's a wet system though, so while it's fast, it's not as fast as, say, dry machines like your computer because of its reliance on the second system. The other system, blended into your wetware, is a host of chemical conductors of your neurological orchestra. These chemicals start and stop the various circuits of neurons according to timings and biological rhythms and messages delivered by your senses. They operate in a sort of harmonious balance. Too much of one or another, a natural deficiency or even an injury, can cause tremendous problems in your brain, problems which affect your thinking, behaviors, or physical health. Tinkering with this brain chemistry is a daunting and perilous undertaking. Just ask the first guy to perform the lobotomy or even suggested it. It is nearly impossible to deliver a chemical to one area of the brain that controls, say, the formation of long-term memories without also accidentally controlling the same chemical in another area of the brain that releases hormones in your liver. Nevertheless, an entire field dedicated to mastering the chemistry of our brains has emerged in the last few decades. Once resigned to the dingy alleys of pseudoscience and alternative medicine, nootropics have gained recent credibility as long-term studies have shown their effectiveness. These chemicals are intended to improve our mental functions and... I hope this is obvious, but before you start taking things that mess with your brain chemistry, you need to go talk to your doctor. But in case it's not, go talk to your doctor. Don't start messing with your brain chemistry because of a video you saw on the internet. Especially mine. Not that you don't already, 9 out of 10 adults have been taking nootropics since they were old enough to drink from a straw. The most commonly used psychoactive drug on the planet is, of course, caffeine. The stimulant enhances the feeling of wakefulness by inhibiting adenosine receptors in your brain. These are the things that make you progressively tired as the day goes on. It has been suggested to pair caffeine with L-theanine, often found in teas, as their combined effects were shown in a 2014 study, among others, to boost mood mood and mental performance. Other nootropics include Bacopa monieri, a heavily tested herbal extract shown to raise the levels of chemicals associated with memory formation and recall in the brain, and other medications once used in the treatment of ADHD, Parkinson's, and even Alzheimer's have promising nootropic effects, even for healthy brains, but these are still being tested for safety and efficacy. Still, even mastering the chemicals in our brains won't help us to approach some of the memory capacity and computational capacity of computers that are 30 years old. I'm talking about the 686 prototypes with the artificial intelligence risk chip. 
uh, our wetware brains are just too slow, they're prone to errors, they're prone to damage and misfires, so what we need is technology to bridge the gap between our wetware and hardware, and that technology is augmented reality. Not to be confused with virtual reality or VR, augmented reality aims to prop up our brains by acting like a sort of second non-invasive brain that we can carry around and wear. AR takes a live view of the world around you with some sort of camera and offers helpful information by way of a projected image either directly onto an object around you or onto glasses that you're wearing. Here's a quick demo of what AR can do. As our integration with this technology improves and as it continues to learn more about our preferences and what we're wanting from it, it will bring us ever closer to that true machine-human interface. After all, eventually the goal is going to be to put these things inside of our heads so that we don't have to mess with all these cumbersome devices anymore. A few upgrades later and there won't be much of your original brain left. Now, if that scares you, consider the ship of Theseus. A thought exercise where the great hero Theseus is sailing his great ship so much that certain wooden parts just have to be replaced. Over time, he replaces the oars, the rails, the benches, even the great ribs of the ship and all of its hull, every board, piece by piece. So, is it still the same ship? If not, at what point did it stop being the original ship and become a new ship? Did you know that your body replaces billions of your cells every day? Have we, as humans, with our books and televisions and internet, already begun the same process with our brains? Upgrading our wetware brains is going to require a very thorough understanding of the neurological architecture. The wiring of neurons in your brain is anywhere from a hundred trillion to a quadrillion connections. That's a one with 15 zeros after it. It's the most complex thing we have ever come across, bar none. And so helping us do that is two really exciting imaging technologies that allow us to study an active living brain without having to actually go into your skull. EEG measures electrical activity along your scalp, corresponding to the parts of your brain that are just below the skull that we know are associated with certain activities. Say you think about your cat, one region of your brain will activate, setting off those sensors. Hear a piece of Mozart and another will trigger and so on. Knowing exactly which areas of the brain correspond to which activities allows us to create methods for engaging those parts of the brain directly, just like you saw with the visual prosthetic in the previous video. To go deeper though, we have to go gamma. Yeah, that gamma. SPECT imaging uses actual gamma radiation to study the brain in action at all levels, in real time, down to the sharpest resolution we've managed yet. Still, even these incredible images are just a sort of shadow of actual neurological activity. They measure blood flow in these areas, not the actual nerves or, most importantly, their connections. To date, no test exists which allows us to trace the minute pathways of neurological activity in real time. It is a monumental undertaking, orders of magnitude more complex than mapping the human genome was. And just like that project, which many felt was impossible and a waste of time and resources, we will overcome this hurdle as surely as we have every other previous impossibility. There remains one impossibility, still so far out of reach, and yet so tantalizingly closer than ever before, that it bears some investigating. So I hope you'll join me next week as we look into what may well be, or what may definitively be, the most important technology human beings ever create.